Climate change in our world is becoming an increasing threat to those living in coastal communities. The site of this project is called Kiribati, which is a small nation in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Global warming, rising sea levels, and increasing storm volatility is rendering Kiribati uninhabitable. It's predicted that the atoll will actually be underwater by the year 2100. This project proposes a solution for a new type of land, which could serve as an alternative living situation for the people of Kiribati. Something that I'm asking is, how do we design for people who have incredible ties to this place and years and years of generational knowledge that we can barely even begin to understand? Kiribati is a nation of 33 atolls in the Pacific Ocean. An atoll is a ring-shaped reef, island, or chain of islands formed by coral. They typically have a small amount of freshwater, very little land, and a thin layer of soil on top of a bed of coral. In Kiribati, this atoll is connected by one main road that allows islanders to get from one side to the other. The atoll that I chose for this project is Tarawa, which is the most populated atoll in Kiribati. As rising sea levels encroach on the atoll, the land is shrinking, making it harder to live there. Many homes are lost every year to the sea as the waves become more violent. When the sea gets too close, people build new homes inland, but eventually, there won't be any land left. In an effort to keep the ocean at bay, families create defensive seawalls to protect themselves. These are often made from sand, concrete, coral, and tires. However, the seawalls can't stop the sea levels from rising. Unless we find a solution now to address this problem, you know. People will be forced to leave if we do not step in right now, today, to help them to adapt, to stay. Coral is the atoll's natural defensive system, but sun bleaching and pollution is causing the coral to die, which makes the atoll even more vulnerable. Plastics and garbage are piling up on the shores due to lack of ocean waste management by the world. For the people of Kiribati, clustering equals togetherness. They have tight-knit communities with multi-generational housing and large families. Families often cook together and spend time preparing meals for each other. People use local foods and imported foods and often have pigs or chicken. Traditional community activities and celebrations are at the heart of the culture and bring people together. There are deep community bonds in Kiribati and people do not want to have to leave their homes. The first component of the project is called New Land. The New Land platforms create space for people to inhabit when it becomes too unsafe to live on the atoll. The platforms are floating, connected by a tissue of land suspended between them. But how exactly do we make new land? How can we transfer the essence of the existing space to something artificial? The platforms themselves are circular, which is inspired by wave surge dissipation tactics. A circular shape is able to effectively respond to changes in the ocean from all directions and can be spun around so erosion occurs evenly on all sides. The platforms are organized into three different sizes based on local scales relative to the atoll. Keeping the sizes limited will allow a simplified production process. Platforms are intended to stay relatively small to allow light down into the ocean floor and to maintain a connection to the water. Relative to the atoll, Meka is located in the lagoon, which acts as an incubator for the project while it's being assembled. The seafloor depth at this location is around 15 to 20 meters. The project shadows the atoll in a way that will allow the shape of the land to be honored and reflected in the project. The mobility of the project is organized based on current mobility on the atoll, with one main road connecting all the pieces. The road is anchored to the seafloor and acts as a public space for travel. Suspended between the platforms is an intermediary threshold which connects the land together and acts as a buffer between the platforms and storms, which protects them and allows movement. While the platforms are more private, the thresholds open up opportunities for public space in between. The edge condition is a beach, floating on discarded plastics. The beach is such an important shared space for everyone on Kiribati and is a vital public asset. The plastic beach is a collective public space that people can also utilize to help clean the ocean. The platforms are made of durable, strong, and light materials, which will allow them to last for a long time in the salt water. Aluminum on the outside protects the interior from salt. The rest of the platform is built using wood, concrete, coral, and soil from the atoll. The surface will allow plants and trees to grow, while the concrete and control layers protect the wood from water. The structural system is a combination of coconut lumber and imported timber. The large wooden trusses support a layer of concrete, which supports a layer of soil. Structures built on the surface of the platform can be connected to the frame, making the entire system one connected entity. The main structural component is a large wooden truss. Truss building is a common skill among builders on the atoll, so this, these components could be easily built and the knowledge could be shared with others. 
The platforms themselves are closed loop system. Water collected through the surface can be stored and filtered for redistribution. Water can also be desalinated in case of drought. Energy can be collected, managed, and stored using sun, wind, and wave energy. Waste can also be processed on this floor. In case of emergency, there's a second exit hatch. Platforms are ventilated on the edges and through the center stairwell to provide fresh air underneath. Over time, the platforms can experience different lives. They're built in shipyards and later can be repaired on nodes which are attached to points on the atoll. When the platforms become, become unusable, they can be repurposed as trash collectors. Eventually, they could become recycled on the ocean floor as stimulants for coral reef growth. As the atoll becomes submerged, makeup grows. The construction will happen in two different phases. So at this point in the project, we're going to add a little protection because the sea levels are rising incrementally and we should be prepared. Phase one of MECA creates infrastructure for food production. Phase one introduces the farming of plants, animals, and fish. Phase one will be built while islanders still live on the atoll and will help decrease reliance on foreign trade while providing fresh food for the islanders. Phase one is built on the outer edge of the road facing the ocean. The first component of phase one is agriculture. The agricultural module provides indoor and outdoor space for growing. Families can take ownership of space and greenhouses. For inspiration, I investigated the properties of hard coral. This specific type of coral is unique in that the small holes allow sun and nutrients to filter through, which creates a space for things to grow and survive underneath them. Based off this exploration, my suggestion for a versatile, cheap, and easy to build greenhouse would be a geodesic dome. However, the form of a geodesic dome is foreign to islanders and may not be adapted by all. There are also greenhouses which respond to typology used more typically on the atoll today. The greenhouses will be covered in a protective plastic that will endure salt sprays. More delicate vegetables and fruits are unlikely to survive outside of the greenhouses due to the close proximity to the seawater. The greenhouses can vary in size and placement depending on what the family needs. Naturally, people can claim their space with textiles, additional structures, or in any way they see fit. This platform supports composting, storage, and distribution of water and general storage beneath it. This module will rely heavily on water supply. The second component of phase one is called animal culture. This module creates space for families to raise cows, pigs, and chicken to reduce reliance on imported animal food products. This model explores table coral, which collects sun by fanning out, but provides shade for delicate plants to grow underneath. The canopy is a response to protecting the animals from the sun. Can canopy can also be used to collect sun energy. Here's some examples of animal farming on the atoll today. There are two types of protective bonds. One is round in shape and can be largely central, which would be more useful for the larger animals. Smaller barns will be cheaper to build, more familiar, and better for the smaller animals. Generally, the modules can be organized on the platforms such that varying sizes in space, barns, and canopies can allow for different sizes of animals to be raised and farmed. Families can share plots with each other. The barns act as a closed shelter and the canopies act as a transition from closed to open space. Mobility for this module occurs mainly on the edges of the new land to provide space for the animals. Underneath the land, the space can be used to store food, water, and process waste. Gray water from the soil will be recycled and composted waste can be distributed to the greenhouses for fertilizer. The third component of phase one is called aquaculture. This module provides infrastructure for the cultivation of saltwater fish, seaweed, and vertical shellfish farming. These modules are different from the others in that they have voids in the center to allow for farming in the water. This wave-shaped coral allows for different kinds of small creatures to live inside the nooks and crannies created by the curves. The wave shape inspired the idea that the shape of the fish farm module could help stimulate underwater growth on the platform. Here's some examples of existing aquaculture farming. The wave-shaped module provides space for the farming of saltwater fish and encourages underwater growth on the platform. The donut-shaped platform is intended to support seaweed growth, which can be attached to the ropes strung across the center. Vertical shellfish farming can be hung underneath this module as well. These components can be arranged as needed and will be buffered by the thresholds in between. Since aquaculture is an incredibly important aspect in the culture of the Ikiribas people, adequate sizing is vital. 
The fish module is 100 foot in diameter, and the seaweed and shellfish component is 75 feet in diameter. People can move around the edges of the pools of water. At the bottom of the fish module, there will be netting strung across the sides. This will keep the larger fish in, but will allow water and small creatures to move freely. The vertical shellfish components and the seaweed ropes can be pulled out of the water for harvesting. All right, so at this point in the project, we're at around the year 2040, and the water is becoming much more threatening. Ooh, okay. At this point in the project, the atoll is no longer safe to live on, and people will begin to migrate to Meka as phase two begins. Phase two of Meka introduces settlement of people onto the new land. Phase two happens on the inner edge of Meka and will be protected by the agricultural components. Phase two is intended to act as a buildable framework for islanders to take ownership of. Suggestions for the new structures are based off existing conditions on the atoll. The first component of phase two is called people culture, which is housing for families. On Kiribati, land tenure is constructed on a kin or individual basis. Families can take ownership of platforms which can be passed on through the generations. These are some images of some existing residences on the atoll. There are varying sizes of homes and densities of neighborhoods. Many of the forms maintain a similar typology. Here's a basic system of three different units. There are three main sizes of buildings which can support the needs of large or small families. Sunshades are very common and an important component. When organized together, the different platforms create neighborhoods. People can cluster together similarly to that of the islands and can create a less dense or more dense housing situation depending on the need of the family. Shared space is common. Naturally, people will fill the space with whatever they need and however they want to express their ownership of the place. People can fill their space with additional structures, textiles, goods, mats for sitting, and places to cook. The underwater space will control the water, energy, and waste management in a fully closed loop system for the housing. Additional storage for families can be provided underneath as well. The second component of phase two is called communal culture, which focuses on a gathering space, space to trade resources, and open space for play. This aspect of Meka focuses on how people can come together in a shared space. On Kiribati, the traditional community meeting place is a large structure called a maneba. These structures are intended to be able to fit the entire community for gatherings and events. The lip of the roof is often very low to the ground to avoid being picked up by a strong wind. These are some examples of shops and markets where the people share goods and food. Being able to share and trade resources is an integral part of the culture. This axon illustrates how gathering space, a place to trade resources, and open space may be arranged on the new land. This framework offers a suggestion for how islanders could utilize the new land to suit their needs. Within communities on Kiribati, there is often one maneba in which other components of the community are clustered around. This example shows how community components can be arranged around the main gathering space and can become a place where people come together. Gathering space, shared resource centers, and open space can take many different forms. A variation of unit sizes depends on the shopkeeper's needs for their goods. The interstitial space allows movement and space for groups of people. Underneath this module will be extra space for the storage of goods and public water collection. People can use the space in a shared manner. So in the end, this project barely brushes the surface for what it would take to transfer an entire community from their homeland to an artificial reconstruction. What does it mean to move to new land? Will the people of Kiribati be able to maintain their relationship to the place under new circumstances? What are some ways in which we as designers can learn from communities and come up with respectful, innovative, and responsive proposals to combat the inevitable effects of global warming? This change is real and it's happening right now. If we all work together, we can come up with a solution. I wouldn't imagine my people living to another country that is not theirs, because we have a very deep connection with our land. But moving away to somewhere where you do not belong to you, you will always become a second-class person. In your heart, you know that you don't belong there. <laughs>